Welcome to the July issue of NTV. We're coming to you from the Boundary Project, just half mile south of the Canadian border. I'm Sharon Bennett. And I'm Dave Daniel. I'm an electrician constructor, and I've been working at Boundary for the last 14 years. Although it's 400 miles from Seattle, 54% of the power that Seattle City Light generates comes from Boundary. The Boundary Project is hidden in a rock canyon tucked away in a setting of natural beauty. During this issue of NTV, we'll take a look around Boundary and introduce you to those of us who work here, far away from Seattle and the Skagit. Days here start early, with the crew arriving for a tailgate meeting at 7 a.m. The powerhouse is located in an enormous man-made cavern carved out of solid rock. Bob Kravinoff leads the morning meeting. It's, it's a little slower pace life here. Um, with a, a small group, we, we uh, tend to work well together, I think, for the most part. And uh, it's a little bit different than working in a lot of places in Seattle in that uh, you, have to, you have a variety of work. Um, I might be working at the switchyard part of a day and coming down and working on a generator, uh, something going wrong in the communications room or something, and so I could find myself just about anywhere. Uh, so it, it's uh, never boring. I don't think I've ever been bored here. I know we rely an awful lot on the supporting crews from Seattle, and without their help, we'd be in a real bind getting a lot of things done around here. But we do have good communications between Boundary and the rest of the supply system. Now, if we just have a computer link, we'll already have it made. Used to be the communications was very poor. With the advent now of, um, well, NTV, for one thing, has helped a lot. We, we get a lot more information through that. Uh, there's newsletters that come out. The, the, the net network has helped. And uh, the fax machine has helped we get a lot more information, uh, more timely. Um, that's the negative side. The good side is we don't hear a lot of the, well, for lack of a better term, the political um, goings-on that's happening in Seattle or with who's doing what and, and some of the turmoil that seems to go on that we hear rumors about, but we don't really see. So I think we live with a lot less um, pressure from just non-job related things that are happening within the company. So I think it's it's uh, easier from that point of view. With the training we get from tying knots to rigging to uh, uh, supplying the proper machinery, we uh, can uh, make a, a viable generation plant in the middle of nowhere. Most people travel over here in the summertime and they say, oh, it's so pretty. But boy, oh boy, come September, October, November, look out. <laughs> you better have a four-wheel drive and be ready for it. It's, it gets pretty severe sometimes. And uh, mainly I'm here for, um, uh, well, they call me the PA, purchasing agent, which is kind of a, not an official title, but it's uh, uh, what my job is mainly, is to do a lot of purchasing of uh, parts, supplies, uh, equipment, tools, major tools like the one behind me, toolboxes, uh, hand tools, anywhere from uh, nuts and bolts on up to generator rotors. This is a close-knit group. There are 25 employees who work here year-round, supplemented with a summer workforce of five to seven additional employees. We get along just great. Most of the time, it's like one big happy family. A lot of times, the crew feels that they are the forgotten crew um, I'm just real proud of them. While the weather permits, nearly the entire workforce is involved in a big project, replacing breakers in the switchyard. The job will take six weeks and brings two retired City Light workers back to active duty to lend their expertise. The Boundary Powerhouse Maintenance Crew were J.D. Ross Award winners last year for saving the utility as much as three million dollars. Even here at Boundary, the farthest removed work group from downtown sees forces of change at City Light. I think looking at our nation's uh, economy and the way we've been doing things in the past, uh, uh, change is definitely a necessity. Um, I look at Boundary, I look at City of Seattle through my career as uh, 
evolved into a governmental type uh, uh, trend of, uh, I want to use the word $147 uh, hammers. Um, I'm hoping that we, we go towards more an entrepreneurial type government uh, locally in Seattle and, and hopefully to benefit the boundary in particular. If you look up white paper in Webster's Dictionary, it says a special government report on any subject. And the subject that's been making news around City Light is the white paper, giving 10 reasons why City Light must change. The video, called 10 Reasons Why City Light Must Change, will be viewed by work groups utility-wide. Additional copies are available by calling 684-3112. As you'll see in the video, one of the forces driving change is a new political landscape, one that affects utility business. Uh, those utilities that can anticipate that free market circumstance, that can get the transmission access and, and market their own resources in ways that advantage their own ratepayers, are, are going to be uh, uh, well off. Those utilities who try to stand pat are, are going to find themselves surrounded by others uh, who are going to steal their markets. Uh, or who are going to do things that keep their rates low uh, and when new industry has a choice it's going to go into the service areas of those utilities with lower rates who have been smarter about how they market. One way City Light is preparing for change is with a special project in strategic technology and planning. Ed Marshall proposes to reinvent the way we view and incorporate marketing within the utility. He's working on a strategic marketing plan and a marketing organization using many resources we already own, which fits in with the strategic corporate plan and does all of this in an entrepreneurial fashion. This is the stereotype of the term marketing, and it is the way people operate in a seller's market. We are in a buyer's market right now, and I guarantee that fact be even more obvious in the future. Marketing is finding needs and filling them rather than creating programs and selling them. A selling orientation starts with an existing organization and its products, then focuses on stimulating demand or attracting resources for them. A marketing orientation begins with the agency goals and target markets, then plans its programs and activities in order to best respond to and satisfy the customer's needs. Lou Guzzo says that Seattle City Light is a golden goose, and what I'm proposing is that instead of selling the goose, we give her all of the opportunity and encouragement that we are legally able to do in order for her to do what she does best, and that is to lay golden eggs for the city of Seattle and above all for our ratepayers. Sometimes it's a real jolt to see someone out of context. For those city lighters who are used to seeing me as a mechanical engineer, this new role is an easy fit because what I'm delivering is methods for re-engineering our marketing processes. I'm delivering choices to my customers, Norm, Roberta, and the executive team. Innovation projects being considered include using our utility poles for fiber optics, which has a potential to generate a great deal of revenue for City Light. We already have a fiber optics backbone to transmit data, audio, and video. Mike Loss has been working with the fiber optics network at City Light. Uh, fiber optic cable is significantly less than wire cable, and as you can see, a 2,400 pair wire cable is three inches in diameter, whereas a fiber optic cable is about the size of your hair, and you can get about 20,000 conversations on it. Video monitoring of the Skagit Dam is sent by fiber optics to the power control center. We are only using a minor fraction of fiber optics capacity. Other innovations being considered are marketing of employee inventions like Joe Green's award-winning pole grounding system to utilities nationwide. Executive team members like Maddie Bailey view this as positive change. I think they're very exciting. I think that uh, because there's such a broad range of ideas uh, that you can become involved in with this innovation project, gives an opportunity for employees throughout the utility to become actively involved in making these changes. I, I think that they uh, signify the fact that it isn't this or that or one way or another way that things have to be done, that there's a lot of different opportunities to do things in a lot of different ways, and that this effort will cause us to um, uh, fundamentally change in a way that we as a government uh, department 
can operate as efficiently as any good business. If you have ideas that can be put to use in the innovation area, call the innovation line 684-9147. The peaceful atmosphere at Boundary is far from the hustle and bustle of city living. Each season has its own unique beauty. Boundary country is abundant with water, tall trees, and wildlife. Although man-made, the Thin Arch Dam, rising 340 feet from bedrock, is a powerful addition to the natural scenery. During years with heavy snowfall and runoff, spilling of excess supply is necessary and a spectacular sight. The pace of work and life is slower here. It takes longer to travel between places. And it's easy to forget that the Boundary Plant is an integral part of our city-owned utility. Summer in the city is bad enough without detours, traffic jams, and utility construction. But for these network crews, the city is their year-round workplace. And despite the heat, they think it's all right. These vault rebuilds on First Avenue at Post and Spring are jobs that take quite a while. Work started here back in January. Crews have to listen to input from passersby and business owners. Once we've been there a couple weeks, we usually get to know the local business owners or the people that walk by there every day and they've asked enough questions and our crew chief and uh, other people that, that work with the PR more than we do, you know, are good about that and they, they get the right information. They work in all kinds of weather and noise traffic jams and the challenges of what might be found underneath the street are all a part of the job. Just that it's hard work and you know to see a smile or that we're doing a good job trying to meet the needs of uh, Seattle is nice. Work on the First Avenue vault is expected to be completed in mid-September. You know, most of our workforce is aware of the Skagit Tours. But you may not know you can visit the Boundary Powerhouse and its surroundings if you're ever in the area. Tourists who stop by are taken through the Powerhouse viewing area by tour guide Crystal Smith, who is here for the summer. From the Vista House on the other side of the dam, a self-guided tour shows visitors the perspective of the mountain containing the Powerhouse, the dam, and a spectacular setting all around it. About 5,000 visitors come here each year, many to use the nearby boat launch and recreational areas. If you plan to visit Boundary, feel free to give us a call. The phone number is 625-3453. Or stop by and introduce yourself. We'll be glad to show you around. Well, that wraps up another edition of NTV. Don't forget, we're interested in your story ideas or your work activities that other City Light employees might be interested and want to know about. Phone number is 684-3112 to call with a story idea or to request a previous tape if you'd like to borrow one. I've really enjoyed showing Boundary to all you folks back in Seattle and the Skagit. For NTV, I'm Dave Daniel. And I'm Sharon Bennett. Bye-bye.